Now, what I would like to really ask you, and I would like to start with the Minister of Agriculture, Rwanda. Not that because we heard from your Prime Minister, but we really want to know, beyond what he elaborated, to go and get us an understanding of what were the factors that helped beyond the planning and the programs, what factors really bring about that success? And when failures happen, how do you pick yourself and how did you go about uh, learning from it? So to you, Minister. Uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, I thank you everyone uh, who is attending uh, this conference because it's a uh, uh, very important uh, uh, conference. And um, uh, uh, to, st to set the stage, uh, probably I need to let you know that uh, we consider Rwanda as a young country of uh, 24 years since we came uh, out of uh, the uh, ashes of uh, the genocide against the Tutsis. So we have been uh, trying to deal with uh, issues of uh, emergencies, but also transit shining into sustainable uh, development. So what I tell you is that uh, at least, I mean, now we are uh, aiming at a 12-year horizon to end hunger and malnutrition, and I was looking at our numbers, and I found that uh, in the past uh, 12 years, Rwanda has been able to uh, improve the food security from uh, uh, 65 to 82 percent. It has been able to reduce the malnutrition, especially the stenting, uh, from 52 percent to 35 percent. So that's what we have been able to achieve in the 12 years. So we need really to accelerate to be able to end all of this uh, in the next uh, uh, 12 years. But uh, coming to your question, I think the success uh, factors in uh, Rwanda context I mean, uh, I hear a lot of talk about uh, the political will and the leadership at the country level, but uh, in a Rwandan context, that has been achieved. So the big success factor in Rwanda has been the political and the leadership uh, 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 commitment coming all the way from uh, President, uh, President Kagame but also my immediate boss has just spoken, so the political will is really obvious, and uh, that has been really a key driver to make all of the government the, and our partners to be people-centered. So all interventions that we do, we do them, but uh, having in mind who are we working with and how do we improve the conditions of lives? So that has been a, a key success story, I mean, a factor number one. The uh, second uh, uh, factor has been, uh, I think, the clear uh, planning and also targeting what we needed to achieve. So we have all the way from the long-term, medium, and the short-term plans, and I think uh, uh, Prime Minister has just mentioned that uh, we just launched uh, last July the fourth agricultural strategic, uh, uh, pl uh, strategic plan for agricultural transformation, and the main, main uh, 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 goals of it, it's uh, uh, making Rwanda a food secure country that is enjoying uh, nutrition health and uh, a sustainable economic growth. So those are the three things that agri agriculture is all the time uh, looking at. Another uh, uh, probably success factor has been uh, a high level of accountability. Because I guess you have heard my boss just saying numbers, numbers, and numbers. So we are coordinating among ourselves, but also a very high level accountability to make sure that everyone is doing what he's uh, or she's supposed to be doing, but also being accountable to each other. So I think uh, that's what uh, we have been really the big uh, factors. But uh, I think uh, when you look at uh, how the issues of food security and 
nutrition has been addressed in Rwanda, it's uh, mainly driven by government interventions. So we feel that really to break through and uh, uh, scare scale up very quickly what we do. There is the need of also, I mean, we work with the, uh, different uh, partners, but uh, the private sector is the key. So that's how, uh, mainly how you scale up. So I, I was, we are seeing the private sector coming on board on uh, nutrition aspect. The Prime Minister has mentioned uh, blended fortified uh, foods, but also we have also another private sector that is uh, supporting uh, small livestock programs because we feel that beside the one cow per poor family that was mentioned, it is also important to load proteins into the rural community. So that we are partnering with uh, one uh, uh, chicken, uh, uh, one old chick, uh, companies that is uh, having a model to distribute the chickens in the rural community. But also, we feel that uh, also the involvement of young people is another thing that we need to be uh, pushing quickly because we have been uh, engaged with the young people, trying to incentivize them in agriculture since uh, two years ago. But what we see they don't produce typical crops that are we usually know. They focus on high value commodities. They focus on fruits. They focus on vegetables. They focus on eggs. And all of these high value uh, nutritious commodities, that's where you find them. And also, they produce more, better standards than the previous uh, generation of uh, farmers and the uh, agriculture. So I feel that uh, uh, the private sector and the youth involvement for scaling up what the government has been uh, achieving, in addition to other partners, uh, those are key things to be also bringing on board. Of course, we... Uh, our frustration is that we fear that we are no, not moving as fast as we would love to be moving at. So that's uh, how I can frame it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, you touched on uh, some very important uh, aspects, political leadership, planning, high level of accountability, private sector, young people. Uh, so quite a lot of what uh, Rwanda is doing. Uh, what I would have also liked to be heard from the Prime Minister on this one cup of milk per child, and um, also the min your ministry looking at the food consumption standards as a goal. Uh, it's a, I'm a bit curious, how did you go about adapting these goals and targets, particularly for a Ministry of Agriculture? You know, what instigated you to go about this? Uh, when you look at... Uh uh, what we do, as I mentioned, we are citizen-centered government. That's uh, one incentive that, can, uh, that has uh, led us into uh, this program of uh, one cup of milk per child, because not only looking at the nutrition, but also the building the human capital. We want our children to remain in school and reduce the rates of uh, dropout. That's uh, uh, something. But also, uh, when you are doing your programs like this, it's, um, they don't come alone like that. You know, when we, the uh, president initiated the one cow uh, per poor family, the milk production started to go up very quickly. So with that, uh, excess of milk, and you know, in a developing world, the, the agricultural commodity trade and the pricing is a big uh, problem. So instead of, I mean, we get sometimes frustrated, but uh, reducing that frustration is uh, one way it's investing it where it, ha it has to have the maximum impact. And the maximum impact, uh, that 
uh, you can think of is investing in young children, raise up their uh, education, because we feel that uh, as a country, we are a small country, so the biggest and the most important resource that we have is our people, so we need to produce uh, uh, the citizens that are decent enough to uh, drive ambitions. Thank you very much, Minister, for sharing your story with us.